you can understand that we have just just nibbled at the tip of the iceberg there with this one. G'day everybody, this is Mupasega on behalf of Mupacorp. Thank you for being here. Now, it's been a long time since I've done any videos whatsoever on YouTube. During all this confusion and all this madness, I have, however, been streaming on Twitch and the community is growing and they are awesome. If you have any spreads that you would like to share, do bring them and say hello. If you've had any, any questions about anything that has been, that you have been watching up until this point also, that is the best place to get any feedback. Now that uh, I will be, I stream every Monday and Wednesday night, and that is Australian time for about five, six hours. I'd absolutely love to see you there. Um, come and share on the chill, come and share the spread um, and just be, and, and just, just be you're you're always welcome now today what we will be working on is your very first esi pool very very simply we are going to find out the system cost index for a system that um as long as you have the system id and excel this is how we're going to do it i will see you soon let's get cracking now the resources that we will be using today are here esievetech.net this is where you're going to find out the url for your endpoint so where you are calling this information in from the eve api the next one you are going to be using is adam for eve.eu this is an incredible resource these guys are incredible and they've got a lot of industrial resources and just general pi everything uh, market information they are just all over it. The next is that I might talk about Gessy at some point, which is an add-on for Google Sheets, which actually makes it much easier to do API polls and API calls, whatever you want to call them, via Google Sheets. Now, obviously, if you're doing it on Google Sheets, you will not have the same element of just raw power that comes with doing things in Excel, okay? So let's get first of all cracking. We need to find out the system ID that we are doing our manufacturing in, okay? So to do that, we are going to head to the one that we were talking about, adam4eve.eu. Once you're here, you go to informations, then list locations. Now I'm pressing, I'm pressing control F on my keyboard. You won't be able to see it because it is down here. But once you press control F, I will then go in and type Odatrick down the bottom here. And now it is going to present me here with a system ID. So as you can see there, there is Odatrick. And here is the system ID for Odatrick. So I'm going to grab that, copy that one. And I'm going to go and store it somewhere safe in Excel. Okay, so here's my lists place. And I'm going to pop it just there. Make it large enough so it can see. And then I'm going to call this Odatrick system ID. Okay. Odatrick system ID. So we now have stored our system ID. Get ESI call URL. So to do that, we are going to head on over to the Eve Swagger interface. ESI.evetech.net. All these links will be down in the bottom in the YouTube description. Um, so the call that we want to make today is in here. We can talk more about this at another time, this Eve Swagger interface, but honestly, I'm not the guru on this stuff, but I can share with you what the, the little that I do know, okay? Now, the pull that we are making today is possible because it doesn't require any authentication, okay? There's no point where you have to say, my character is this, and thus I should have access to the wallet information of the character, right? And then you prove that you are that character, and thus you have action, and, and, and then you have um access to whatever information it is being the jobs that you're running or the wallet information or your assets or any of that kind of stuff and that is where if you want to make those kind of polls i would definitely recommend going and checking out Gessy for google sheets made by the incredible black smoke 16 okay okay so we're going here now we're going to say get industry systems click on that one now it gives us an uh, an opportunity to try it out okay so we can we can with these other ones, if I was to do like, um, I don't know, character here and I press on this one and I say, try it out. It is going to give us a, a few parameters, right? Just say, well, what is the character ID, blah, 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 that you want to find information about. But this is not the pool we are doing. And the pool that we are doing or the call that we are doing requires no sort of parameters. You don't need to say anything. You just say, try it out. So we say, try it out and then we execute. And what this is going to do, it's going to do some thinking and it's going to give us a, a, a URL. So it's returning this information here. Yeah, this is this is the result of of that call that we just made. 
Yeah. Now you could download it and try and using it that way, or you can just go to the request URL here, grab all of that, control C, and then head back to Excel. Okay. Now we could store it here, maybe just in case. Let's store it there just in case. So we have gotten our ESI call URL. We've Now we need to pull it into Excel. Now to pull it into Excel, we are going to use what is called Power Query. You're not necessarily gonna know that you're using Power Query. Uh, it's not like you find the Power Query button and press Power Query. It's that actually you go up here to data, data from web. Okay, so data from web. And if you don't see data from web, it's going to get data from other sources from web. Now it's just going to present you a very basic screen here. And in there is where you put your URL. Okay, that we just got from ESI. Okay. Now I'm going to do that. Now we're just going to go and do some thinking and, and, and pull that information. And once we've got that information, we've got to do some transformation in Power Query. Okay. Okay, so notice that well, now that we are here, I do have the Odatrix system ID in the background there. I need to be able to see that, okay? Because as you can see, once I'm in Power Query, I can't go back. It's not gonna let me go back into Excel until I finish with Power Query. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do here now that we've pulled this record, all these records, all this information, we're gonna go and convert it to a table, which is this button here to table. Um, don't worry about delimiters or anything. The next thing is this little square button here is like two arrows going like this and essentially I guess you're opening it up or whatever. Uh, you're expanding it. So I'm going to press that one once and, and I'm selecting everything here. I'm then uh, expanding it again, this one. Expand to new rows and then expand again. So that was three different expansions I guess. The next thing, so so what are we looking at here? We are looking and we see the different kinds of activities, manufacturing, researching time, ma researching material, copying, invention, reaction, okay? So these are all the different indexes given to each kind of, of industrial activity in a system, in any given system. And in, in, in this instance, it is whatever this system is, 30020141, okay? Or we could go to Adam Freeve and actually find out what that is, but I don't care. So what we are going to do now is that we need to filter the results. So we've pulled into Excel, we need to filter these results out. So I don't wanna see, the only things that I wanna see is manufacturing. If I was doing blueprints or if I was doing reactions, then yeah, I'd wanna see those, those cost indexes as well. But for this pool, all I want is the manufacturing one and all I want is for Odatrick. So manufacturing, okay. And then we pop on over here to this column here. So here we have all the manufacturing indexes uh, in the system ID. I don't wanna see every system in the game. All I wanna see is this one here, all right? Now you might encounter this. If you go 30002509, if your number is not there, it does this thing where it don't, it doesn't work, it doesn't, doesn't let you do it. So I'm gonna use a number filter here that goes like this, equals, equals this value, 30002509, like that. Now it runs that query and it has returned just a single row for me now. The manufacturing index is 0 0.0089 and that means that it's 0.8%, yeah? Um, for this system ID. So this is the number that I want, right? So to do this, I'm so to, to, to keep this one here, I'm just gonna select the middle column like this and I'm gonna say remove other columns because this is the one that I want. Now the top little bar there or the header, I'm gonna call this odor trick system cost index man for manufacturing, okay? And now that's my query, it's done. We've got to get it into our sheet now, okay? So I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go, rather than press this one at the top, just close and load, I'm going to say, press on this little one with a little arrow and then close and load two. So I'm now going to uh, choose an existing worksheet and that existing worksheet is going to be here. 
and I'm going to say go over there. I'm going to do this again. Hang on. So the so you're essentially giving it its address. Where where do you want this to be? And I want it to go here. Okay. And then I go okay. It's doing the query again. And there we have our little thing, our little number there, okay? 0 0.0089 and we've got it. So we've pulled it into Excel, we've filtered the results and now we need to prepare the range, okay? I'm going to delete this stuff because we don't need it anymore. Also going to delete this one. So I want to reference this cell in, in the sheet later, okay? Now that we've done that, every whenever the system changes we have a means to find that out it's just going to do the exact same set of steps it's going to pull the same information it's going to do the same filter on it all that kind of stuff but the information is right there and if it changes we just need to hit this refresh button to get the most up-to-date information now i think that the system cost indexes actually only change as of uh, after a system reset or whatever okay so when it comes to something like this, I now want to be able to reference this range in a number of other places. There's two ways of doing it, or there's many ways of doing it. Uh, I can click on this and I can just say in this cell here, I could give it a name, I could say blah, blah, blah. But instead, I will go the old school route in the way that is probably a little bit more understandable. I'm going to select the cell that I want to call it something, okay? I go up to formulas, I go define name, and then I'm going to call this one ODA SCI or ODA SC index. Notice that I'm not putting in any spaces here. If you want to put in a space or something, make sure you're using an underscore for that. Okay. ODA SC index. And now when I click on that cell, it is actually going to like, if I, as an example here, if I pressed, uh, keep an eye on the, um, just down the formula bar down the bottom of there. If I said equals ODA SC index. See how it brings up that for me. And if I press that like that, now it's pulling in that information. It doesn't matter. I don't need to say cell W2. I don't need to chase it all the time. As long as as long as that is is there, and then then I can just uh, just reference the range. That's what you're doing here. So we have prepared the range. Now let's implement it into our system. So here we are, the production component sheet. Okay. So if I was building some fusion thrusters, let's say fusion fusion thrusters, and we were doing 150 fusion thrusters, whoopsie, 150 fusion thrusters at 10 material efficiency, we would start that job, and then the manufacturing cost would come out at something like, now this information out on the right hand side would normally be hidden, it's, it's showing for the video today, but as you can see, again down in this formula bar, above where my cursor is, that is saying time 0.01. That is a static number for for a system cost index of 1%, okay? Now, I don't want it to be static because the system cost index actually changes depending on how much manufacturing or industry is going on in that system, right? So we have set it up um, ready to go. I can go up here and rather than timesing it by 0.1%, I'll go up to the top cell here. I can now just times it by ODA SC index. All right. So there we go. So it is now pulling in all the manufacturing information that I need for that one. And it is done. There's your system cost index. So there we have it, guys. Thank you so much for hanging around. A very easy call to make getting in the system cost index. You can understand that we have just just nibbled at the tip of the iceberg there with this one and there is plenty more opportunities. So yes, I am streaming actually tonight. Tonight is a Monday night, so I'm pretty pumped to go and see the, see the crew. I stream on Monday nights and Wednesday nights in Australian time. So whatever that means for you, I'll see you then. Thank you again, Mupasega. Mupa Sega out.